All right, so over the years, I've had a few requests from customers and people from around the world that I take fishing for me to create some videos on how to fish with different types of lures, how to throw bait casters, how to throw spinner rods. There's a lot of this content already out there on the internet. I don't want to try and recreate it or move in on anybody else's game. So I'm not going to do how-to videos because I'm not so sure the way that I do stuff is the actual way it's supposed to be done. What I am going to do as a series of videos showing how I do it. You may not agree with it, that's fine. This is the way I do it. So this is a not a how-to video, it's a how I do it video. And if, uh, if you've ever fished with me before, you'll know that uh, down here in Central Florida, especially during these hot summer months, we fish a lot of weightless flukes, like the Zoom Super Fluke, or use a lot of different brands. It could be referred to as a um, soft plastic jerk bait. Soft plastic jerk baits, what most people refer to them these days, because there's so many varieties of them besides the, the Zoom Super Fluke, but the Zoom is kind of where it all started. There's several different ways to rig it, and uh, I'm going to show you here. A lot of guys, if they, they'll throw them on a, a weighted screw lock hook here. I don't particularly like that style. This one is a big heavy weight here. You can see there. It's got a screw lock. You screw the head into the, the head of the fluke into the corkscrew there, and then hook it on there weedless. Um, another screw lock hook, big four aught wide gap hook with a screw lock on it. A lot of guys like to use those. And you have your four aught offset uh, wide gap hook. What you do with these different? Oh, and let me show you this here. A lot of guys will rig them with a small bullet weight to get that extra sinking action, help it sink a little bit. So what you do with these three styles of hooks and the weight is you take this weight, this hook, and this weightless screw lock hook, and you set them to the side. Again, this is how I do it. This is the only hook you need right here. Four aught offset extra wide gap hook. Different sizes and variations and a million different colors of um, soft plastic jerk baits, flukes. I'll show you all the different colors I like to use here. See if I can get them all in one shot. That's it, watermelon red. Anywhere I go throughout the country, especially here in uh, Central Florida, watermelon red is the only color you need. You can use any color you want as long as it's watermelon red. I like to rig it, always weightless. Here I got a seven foot two, uh, medium heavy, 13 fishing muse black rod with a concept A reel. Um, I don't particularly care what the gear ratio is. This is a, happens to be a 7.3 7 to 1 gear ratio. We got 15 pound monofilament here. Tie it straight to the line. Problem or not, never fails. Now, the trick is in the rigging. Let me see if I can get this right the first time. No weight, straight to the monofilament, 4 aught extra wide gap, offset hook. Throw the rest of the hooks and little sinker to the side, you don't need them. Make sure you thread this hook straight down the middle of the head of the fluke, or the top of the fluke right there, about a half inch down, and bring it out. Pull it all the way up over, nice and smooth over the knot, so the offset side is sticking out of the worm right there. That's what holds, or the fluke. That's what holds it up. Now, here's where most people make the mistake, in my opinion. Um, that's my disclaimer. My opinion is they'll try and get this fluke on here nice and straight. They'll puncture the the point all the way through and then tuck it back in. Well, if you're throwing this on a bait caster and you really got to whip it out there, as soon as you've punctured that, it's going to tend to slide down more and the head's going to fall down and you're going to go through a lot more flukes. I try to never puncture the um, the skin over the outside edge of the uh, fluke there, the top side of it. And uh, you have to be very careful. If you rig this up and it has any kind of upward arching angle like that, what it's going to do in the water is it's going to twist. If you wear your flukes in and you get a lot of twists in your line, you've got it rigged wrong. I also don't like it to be perfectly straight. So if you see that hook right there where it crosses the fluke, 
Put your thumb right there. That's where it would go in if you wanted it to be perfectly straight. If you keep your thumb there and bring that point down underneath that slot there a little bit further and run it up to where it's just under the surface, again, dead center, and start pulling without trying to puncture it. So right there, it's, it's pretty straight. But I have it kind of bunched up in here because I ran the hook down further towards the end of the fluke. Then I'll pull it. Now I have that little tiny arch in the back. So you have that downward arch like that. And it's not just because of the way it's hanging. See, it's one to arch this way. Now, if you're throwing it out there dead sticking it, or if you're throwing it out there and twitching it on the surface, this little arch here is going to keep it from twisting for some reason. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter. It keeps it from twisting, and it allows you to do that more of that walk in the dog action, back and forth, when it's on the surface or whether it's underneath the water. So that's how I rig a fluke or a weightless or a soft plastic jerk bait. Don't need this hook. Don't need this hook. Fish blowing up behind me. Don't need that weight. Don't throw a weight on them. All right, now that I've showed you how to rig a fluke, or not necessarily how to rig a fluke, but how I do it, um, I'm gonna show you how to fish it. The different techniques, how I like to fish it. So let's get set up here. There's a lot of schooling fish around me. Um, we'll see if we can catch some. All right, so now that I've showed you how I like to rig a fluke, again, weightless, 15 pound test line, a four aught extra wide gap, offset hook, little arch in the back, did not puncture the hook through, perfectly straight down the middle, right out through the middle here, or right up through the middle, under the skin, little arch in the back. I'm gonna show you how I fish it. Because what good is it if you know how to rig it if you don't know how to fish with it? There's a few different techniques when it comes to fishing with these uh, soft plastic jerk baits or flukes. The one most people tend to use would be the working it almost like a surface lure. We're going to cast it out, keep it up close to the surface, and twitch it. That's how I first started fishing them. That's rarely how I fish them now. The way I fish them now is what I call dead sticking. I'm going to show you how you dead stick. This is very important. So, again, no weight. I'm sitting here in the middle of a sitting here in the middle of a 15-foot hole out on Lake Butler. I just randomly stopped here to do this how I do it video, and there's fish blowing up all around me, chasing bait fish. There's no big ones that I can see, but there maybe we'll catch one. So I'm in the middle of this 15-foot hole, marking all kinds of bait fish here on my hummingbird. Um, I'm going to show you how I dead stick. Make a long cast, long as you want. Way out there. 30, 35, 40 yards out there. And then you sit here. And wait. And wait. All right, so when you think you've waited long enough, give it about five more seconds. You notice I did not reel any of the slack into my line. When you don't have a weight on here, as it's sinking, if I were to reel that line tight, it would swing down towards the boat, sinking in a very unnatural movement, swinging down towards the boat. Let it sink on complete slack line. I'm gonna kind of halfway reel that line tight and give it a couple twitches. There's a fish on it. They're not going to drop it. They're going to swim away with it. So you don't have to know right when they hit it. Give it a couple little downward twitches, and it'll walk itself back and forth under the water with big, long pauses in between. Now, if you were to do this throughout your whole retrieve, it would take you forever to get that um, lure back to the boat. Look at that. First cast, I got one swimming with it. Yep. Oh, I missed him. He was probably all of about eight or ten inches long. Anyway, let's go over that again. Long cast, ton of fish out here in this hole. And 
engaged my reel, have not reeled in an inch of line yet. Letting it sink. As it's sinking, because of the arch that I put in the back, it's gonna kind of swim its way down. Not twisting my line. Let it sink down. I'm marking fish. I'm in 16, I'm in 16 feet of water, and I'm marking fish in anywhere from 8 to 14 feet. This is really clear water here on the lake I'm on. So they will come up and eat it. But I'd rather get it down there in that strike zone. A little bass blowing up right here beside the boat. Not sure if the camera's picking that up, but they're literally blowing up right beside the boat here. Now, if they're on the surface, I'll twitch this thing right on top of them and then kill it. Let it sink down. It'd be kind of cool if I caught one while I'm showing you how to fish a fluke. 90% of the time when I'm fishing a fluke, I'm dead sticking it. If you're up in grass, surface, emergent vegetation, where you can see there's a whole bunch of fish right behind this thing. Emergent vegetation, where you can actually see the, uh, the grass on the surface, two to three, four feet of water, you're gonna twitch it up on the surface. If you ever, or anytime you ever come into a hole in the grass, I'd kill it. Just stop it, let it sink down, See what those fish want. I'm gonna um, get my underwater. Oh, that's a big one. Whoa. Be awesome if he ate it. Oh, he ate it. Watch this. Son of that is not how you catch them on a fluke. Ah! So, random spot. A lot of little. I'm I'm looking at ten fish down there, chasing my fluke around. One about six or seven pounds comes up. <laughs> I let it sink down. He ate it, and because I had my own stupid cameras on, I got a little excited and uh, set the hook too hard with about 10 feet of line out and broke it like a rookie. So stupid. It's one of the reasons I'm a guide and not just traveling the country fishing tournaments because I can tell people how to catch them and show them how to catch them but doesn't necessarily mean that I'm able to catch him myself. Mm, that was a big fish. That was a big fish too. They're coming. I can't believe how many fish are out here. Keep it up on the surface real quick. Now I'm gonna let it sink. one not a bad one dead stick in a fluke and 17 feet of water on the Butler chain of lakes at 11 o'clock in the afternoon in the morning and it's 147 degrees out I know the camera's right in the sun but I caught one see ya